Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another edition of the Intelligentsia Cup. This is by far my worst performance of the entire series. We're going to talk about why, and we're also going to talk about how I could have done better. But first, if you're new here, this is a 10 race series out in Chicago. Highest level of crit racing here in the country. Today is no exception. This is a new course. This is the Brookfield Criterium. Nobody's done this course. It was a swelteringly hot and humid day. Just kind of strike one for me. I'm terrible on the heat. I also had a really bad lineup, but I want you to pay attention to this corner right here that we're approaching. I guess this is one, two, corner number three. On the left, I want you to pay attention to that curb right there that juts out. It's a brand new course. Like I said, nobody's familiar with it. And there was a pileup on lap number one. And there's almost another crash on lap number two. Unfortunately, I didn't have the cameras rolling, but point is, is I broke my own rule and I didn't take a free lap when I really should have. So A, that cost me some energy, but more importantly on this course, put me right towards the back. And I have my work cut out for me. This thing is single file. The front of the race is easily 30 seconds ahead of me right now. So I need to move up to the front, connect with my teammate, Ryan. And on a course like this, quite honestly, you're going to have a lot easier time if you're towards the front. Take choice lines to the corners, preserve all of your speed. You don't have to do sustained big power numbers like I am down the start finish straight here. Okay, but first a quick message from the sponsor of today's video, and that is Funrise. What is Funrise? Funrise is America's largest direct-to-consumer alternative investment platform. What they do is they make it easy to invest in things like venture capital, like real estate. But what's really exciting is their push towards investing in pre-IPO blue chip companies leading the AI revolution. So if you want to get in early on AI, which is an industry that a recent PwC report predicts will contribute to more than $15 trillion to the global economy by 2030, Fundrise makes it easy, transparent, and accessible for pretty much anybody. Whether you have $10 to invest or $100,000 to invest, that's the beauty of this platform. So if you want to learn more, I urge you to go check out fundrise.com slash NorCal. Let them know I sent you. That is uh, code NorCal. I'll leave a link down in the description. It'll mean a lot for the channel. But for now, let's get back into some race content. You don't have to hit the apex so hard if you're so wide, dude. And I am just struggling back here, guys. Here I am doing sprint-like numbers after almost getting taken out in that corner. He just went, he was really wide. And then he dove super hard to hit the apex, really for no reason. I had to fight him off with my elbow. And, and what this tells me is people are up against it. People are struggling. That was a pretty desperate, pretty unpredictable and dangerous line he took. And this is just more reason for me to move up. I need to find a way to get up with my teammate to avoid the sketch back here and potential crashes, number one. And then number two, to meet up with my teammate, be in a more favorable, efficient position towards the front. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time. This is just a couple kilometers later. I am just going to nuke it on the inside here. Uh, oh my god, ton of power moving up. Uh, and this is not the right way to do it. Let me be clear. This is one way to do it, but not the right way to do it. Uh, this is very inefficient out in the wind, just smashing like this. But I was, did not feel comfortable um, with that, that near miss a couple of kilometers before this. And then the, um, the other near miss a couple kilometers before that. I just, I'm really motivated to move up. But look, I mean, it, it's going to cost me. I'm 173 beats per minute, 174 beats per minute, and I'm not really holding the wheel here because of that massive 175 beats per minute. For those of you who are longtime fans of the channel, this is, this is a high heart rate for me, especially, we have, guys, we have 37 kilometers left in this race. This ain't it. I mean, there's a tricky balance here, though, right? The balance is between staying near the back where I was, trying to tail gun, dealing with the people taking bad corners, dealing with the gaps opening up the splits as people get dropped versus what I just did, which is just getting out in the wind, moving up, burning a bunch of energy, even if it's not the most efficient way of doing it. Um, ideally, of course, you want to move up in an efficient way, but that is much easier said than done, guys. This is the pinnacle of U.S. crit racing, and sometimes you just got to pick the lesser of two evils. So in this case, I moved up, but man, I really punched my ticket. And yeah, I tried a few more times throughout this race uh, to get towards the front. Here I am again, same spot on the course. Didn't really learn my lesson the first time. Just attempting to move up. But look at the front. I mean, we can see the front of the race. They are still, like, easily 15 seconds ahead of me. And guys, I never found the front of this race. Like, <laughs> I really struggled on this course. I, part of it was the heat. Part of it was my starting position. All of these things, like... I have nobody to blame but myself. Some days you just don't have it. And it's a brutal sport. You guys have to prepare yourself for that. Learn what you did wrong. Try to do better next time. It's like I always say, you know, you either win or you learn in this sport. 
And today I definitely learned. <laughs> I did not win. Uh, and, and look, here's the thing. I wasn't the only one. There were a ton of people dropped in this race, having a bad time out there. But not my teammate Ryan. He smartly locked himself into good position super early on. He had a much better time on this course, navigating these corners way more efficiently than I was able to. So let's pop over to his footage, see how he fared in the final few laps. All right, so like I said, he just did a fantastic job to keep himself in good position. See, when, when the uh, uh, group is all stacked up like this, not single file, that's the time it makes more sense to pop out in the wind and make up position exactly like he did. So I did it in a very inefficient way. Ryan did it in a very efficient way. So yeah, part of it is fitness. Um, of course, there's a barrier to entry when it comes to fitness in this sport. But these small wins are far greater than the, the difference in fitness between the strongest riders in this race and the weakest riders in this race. They just manage, the, manage pack dynamics way better. That's what crit, crit racing is all about. And Ryan is like a shining example of exactly how to do that. We're going to see this play out here in the final few laps. And so late in the race, there is a group of two that gets away. Very threatening group of two. This is Hugo from Project Echelon. And of course, this is Robin Carpenter from, from Team Legion. Um, two incredibly talented breakaway riders, um, which as a result of this breakaway, the group got really fast, right? Because there's all these teams that missed it. Blazers, um, Aviators, to name a couple. So Ryan gets a little bit caught out, but he's going to employ this tactic that I talked about. Don't move up when things are single file. Um, move up back into position where you can take clean lines through corners when things bunch up. And you can see he's found a good wheel here. This is obviously, uh, this is Corey Williams. Uh, I mean, you, people listening to this are going to know who he is. Uh, one of the best crit racers uh, in, in the United States. Uh, his results speak for themselves. He's incredibly talented. So this is a good wheel for Ryan to get on. And look, okay, so things are incredibly fast, single file. Now is not the time to move up. It might be tempting to. You know, Ryan's really fit. His heart rate's in check. But this isn't the right time, and Corey knows this too. So you can see as we come under the start and finish line here, Look at the, the group bunch up, and now look at Ryan's power. He did a little bit more of an effort there. When, when other people were slowing down, he just kept on the power, and you make up a few positions. Turns out Corey was thinking the same thing, and look, they just made up, you know, five or six wheels. Small effort, big win. That's the way it's done. Don't look at what I was doing. I did not know how to race at, at Brookfield. I was seeing cross-eyed. Ryan, a much better example of how to move up, get in a position. Here's the national champion. You know you're in good company when you have Corey Williams and the national champion surrounding you. And Ryan spent the next few laps just kind of doing that shuffle, doing that dance. Uh, he's trying to find those small wins, find ways to move up efficiently. And then when things are really fast, you know, be okay giving up a wheel or two in order to save some energy. And that's the game, guys. At this level of racing, and actually for any level of racing, for that matter, that is how you find success in this sport. Yes, like I said, fitness is cool. Fitness is a, is a tool. Fitness helps you make more mistakes and get away with it. But really, if you want to win, it's more about the pack dynamics, the um, finding gaps, the little wins, because they add up. They're so important. I, I can't stress that enough. You could be the strongest guy in the field, but if you take even just three or four bad corners in a row, you're going to get yourself dropped. And that's why I devote a whole section of the masterclass to, to those skills specifically, because they're that important. Um, shameless plug. There's a link down in the description. But anyway, my, the bottom line is that's what separates those who win from everybody else. And that brings us into just over three laps to go. Breakaway is gone. There's, there's a group of two. It doesn't look like they're going to be caught at this point, um, which means there's a mad dash for that final step on the podium. And no real team control. And look how good Ryan's doing. He's found his way right back up to the front. Only 171 beats per minute. So he's still got a lot of energy in the reserves. And you can see there are there is some organization here. Um, I can see aviators kind of moving up here. Uh, Legion. But it's only kind of in groups of two or three. See the Aviator bringing their sprinter up. See uh, Corey up here with a couple of his teammates. Blazer's doing the same thing. Of course, they don't want to chase their teammates back, on, on Legion, that is, and on Project Echelon, but they want to be prepared to jump just in case it's brought back and also to nab that final spot. So Ryan's in a position without a teammate. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I did not make it this far into the race. So you're going solo, and um, it, it was similar. If you guys missed Lombard, Ryan and I basically uh, switched spots. Um, I was solo at this point in the race. Um, and, uh, and well, I won't spoil it. Go check it out. So Ryan, no team support. How is he going to do this? I think the best way to position yourself at this point in the race is behind these, these uh, leadouts of two or three. See, it's, it's, it's similar if there was like a big um, Legion leadout of eight or nine riders like you see at the end of some of the bigger national level crits. 
Um, but in this case, there's a break, like I said. So these teams aren't organized with the full squad on the front. It's not quite as fast. And that allows Ryan to move up the outside like this. See, for me now, this would be too close to the front. I would not want to be in this position with uh, still over two kilometers to go. I would make sure that a lot of these supporting riders are doing the work on front. And yeah, okay, it looks like maybe uh, Ryan bit off a little bit more than he could chew. He's going to shuffle back here. And this is the position I would want to be in. But man, it's so tricky. Uh, you see the Mido Q rider just filling that space. At this level of racing, guys, th there's, no, there's no freebies. Like, people aren't going to give you, oh, yeah, go ahead. Let me roll out the red carpet for you. They're not going to just let you ride in front of them and take a better line. Um, everyone's fighting for position. Everybody knows through a technical course like this, there's really only one ideal race line, and that means that only one rider can occupy it at a time. Everyone else is single file. And you can see Ryan, as a result, gets pushed a little bit wide, and now he's kind of making up for that that uh, lack of position through that last corner. Had to push um, quite a number of watts. And what did I say earlier? He was at 170 beats per minute. He's at 181, 182 now, and he's doing over 1,100 watts out of this corner. Um, this is where, man, again, sorry, Ryan, where, uh, you know, a team, a supporting teammate would have made a pretty big difference. And at this moment, actually, just over one lap to go, there was a small chase group that made its way off the front. Um, and it is just it is just chaos. There is no team control going on. And um, Ryan uh, really kind of just got unlucky there that he missed out on that group because when he was there at the front, like top three, it it countered that that little chase group that formed countered and went around so now ryan is kind of stuck oh and he's getting passed on the inside this uh this looks a bit rough i mean i did sometimes like the outside line through that corner but not with uh just outside of 1k to go you really need to be taking the fastest possible line through there now he's 185 beats per minute so just getting shuffled back here and it's rough because this is the worst possible time to get shuffled back really he should be um top top five like he was a lap prior a lap prior he made that little move up the outside and he, um, that, that's when he, he needed to save that bullet for this moment on the last lap because now those little leadouts of one or two riders are all taking control on the front. And now because they're a smaller group, it's not the full squad of eight, this is when they can really step up the pace. And you can see it's just tough because when the pace picks up, it's really hard to make up ground. And he, Ryan's doing, you know, a huge amount of power through that corner just to maintain. And, uh, I mean, where are you supposed to go here? Like, it's without, without a teammate, it's really tricky to move up, um, especially on the last lap we have. The cliff bar rider, no teammates in the same position. And then a couple wheels ahead of him, we have the Texas Roadhouse rider. Also no team support, finding it difficult to be in the right position. And now with 350 meters to go, we're entering the final corner. What do I say, guys? First to the final corner. And, you know, Ryan's strong and everything. He's really fit. Still knocks off good power numbers. But, hey, you could have a 2,000-watt sprint. If you're 20th coming through the final corner, that's pretty much where you're going to finish at this point in the race. And that's about where he finished. He makes a few passes here, makes good power. You can see the lead-out uh, lead riders falling back. But I think Ryan ended up 18th. Definitely not the result we were looking for. Definitely not the result I was looking for in this race. And, man, we, <laughs> Ryan and I just could not find good rhythm together like we can in local races. So hopefully tomorrow we'll find better luck. But, uh, hey, huge congrats. To Robin from Legion for taking down the W. And a quick reminder about the masterclass if you're interested in learning more, there's a link in the description. Scholarships are available if you're strapped for cash. It takes less than five minutes, so, so check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.